Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper for Takedown Wrestling Media. The Nike Hot Seat today has a very special guest. It's been 27 years or more since the blackout. His career ended with a loss. He joins us now, Bud Hannibal. Bud, you only lost one match in your high school career. It started for you in Pennsylvania, but it ended in Georgia. You are firmly ensconced in the record books of Georgia high school wrestling. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me. Let's talk a bit about uh, where you are now, and then we'll go back and talk about the story I started with about the blackout. So the Wrestlers in Business Network and uh, Atlanta's Takedown Shop and so many great business people have decided to bring the 2015 All-Star Classic to kick off the collegiate season to Atlanta, Georgia. How special is this? Uh, very special, Scott. It's a... Uh... You know, it's it's something that uh, the people down here in, in Georgia and the Deep South have been starved for. Uh, just, you know, to have the access to the, the highest level of competition, you know, in, in, in the country and in the world. Uh, you know, we, of course, ultimately we have a goal of bringing the, the Division One NCAA championships here to uh, here to Atlanta. And uh, it'll be a chance for us to show off our you know, our people, our grassroots efforts and, and just the, what, what the people here in Atlanta and Georgia and the South have to offer. We're talking with Bud Hannibal of the Wrestlers and Business Network, also with the Takedown Sportswear Company, Randy Kawa, Dustin Kawa down in Atlanta. Been uh, great supporters of the sport, a tremendous uh, athletic offering for the kids in a club format, also with retail and manufacturing capabilities that have just continued to grow. But let's talk a bit about the facility. McCamish Pavilion in Atlanta, in Atlanta Georgia, has just recently undergone major renovations. Uh, yes, it has, Scott. It, it's actually one of the most comfortable facilities that, that, that the sight lines, the, the, the seating, it's all chair back seating. Uh, it, it's just a phenomenal venue uh, and it really close to the action. I mean, uh, I can't say enough about it. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, showing the world, you know, not just uh, McCamish Pavilion, but but what, what we'll do uh, for the All-Star Classic to make it the best one of all time. There's been some tremendous invitations sent out and accepted. Isaiah Martinez, in many ways, leads the way from the University of Illinois. He'll be, I'm thinking it's probably going to be a main event, but at 157, if it's not, I'd be surprised. Yes, I think it will be. With uh, he's wrestling Bruschetta from from Virginia Tech, if I'm not mistaken. But but uh, you know, people like Isaiah Martinez coming to and making the commitment to do something extra. I mean, these athletes, do, it's not a requirement. It's something that they're doing to help the sport. I think as much as anything, and and allow people like myself and all my friends down here, uh, you know, see somebody on the right on our home turf. Uh, but Isaiah is a phenomenal wrestler, and we're all excited about him coming. Fine young man, as is his opponent, Nick Bruschetta. Now, this event is the first time wrestling will be broadcast live from this event on ESPN or the networks of ESPN. How special is that? Oh, uh, it, it, another it, just phenomenal thing. It's just, and what Rob Lairmore, uh, you know, has put together, uh, he's our leader here in Atlanta for our wrestlers and business network. We like to think that our, our group is, is better than any, any other one. Uh, but yeah, it, it's being live on ESPNU is just, uh, that's tremendous for our sport. Uh, we, you know, the lack of coverage we received probably for the world championships, I think a lot of people were, you know, taken back a little bit. The, you know, we have these phenomenal athletes in our sport and we're not getting the coverage. I mean, it'd be nice to sh show the world, uh, you know, what we have. But ESPNU stepping up is, it, this is big. I love it. John Licata, of course, the founder of the Wrestlers and Business Network, firmly in the corner of this event. He loved the idea of having it in Atlanta, Georgia, in many ways to help showcase the sport in a state where wrestling is growing. But we talked a little bit earlier about your history in the sport. And if we go back to where you started, it was Pennsylvania. When did you transplant to, to Georgia? How old were you? 
we 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 moved to Georgia my junior year in high school, and and the, the wrestling such a small community as you know. I you know I like to refer to it as a cult. But when I was I was I'm a little younger than John. Uh, he he looks younger than me, of course. But he uh, <laughs> I remember my my coach in Pennsylvania, a gentleman named Ed Ladamas. Uh, he, he was pretty close with John, even though John was at a rival high school near where I grew up. And of course, I knew who John was and remember some of the college recruiting going on with him. I believe he landed at Westchester, but but I was a young guy, kind of looked up to John Licata, uh, you know, and that's what's great about our sport to have, you know, the kids have that opportunity to look up to some of these really great wrestlers. Such a motivated leader is Licata. Let's talk about your transfer. You went to uh, Parkview High School, is that right? Uh, yes, sir. Parkview High School. Actually, we we moved in 77. So my junior year, 77, 78 was the first year at Parkview. Let's take you to that match <laughs> that's been chronicled at the time. There were 18 seconds left for your second state championship. You held a 2-1 lead over Rockmart's Murray Cruz, a future All-American at Iowa State. If you won, you would have completed a perfect Georgia wrestling career. The lights at that point went out. It was a blackout. You hit your head, causing you to black out, and it was Cruz who went on to win. You lost your only uh, high school match. Do you remember that, and how much of it do you remember? Oh, I remember it too well. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up, Scott. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, so you always remember those tough situations. And, and look, Murray Cruz w was a fantastic wrestler, and uh, I think a lot of people were looking forward to that match. I, and actually, I lost the match probably in the semifinals. Uh, I uh, I was slammed. I finished the match, but uh, had a severe concussion. And, and of course, you know how it's wrestling people are. I mean, I stopped. You know, stopped the sickness and the blood stopped, had 14 stitches. And I wow. figured, hey, let's give it a shot. You know, uh, it was my last match, so I thought it would be a good idea. So I, did my dad. I have your medical <laughs> report here. It was 16 stitches, not 14. Okay. Well, I'm getting older. <laughs> and and as a youngster, i got to believe it was difficult for you to swallow that one defeat. But coming to grips with it, you know, even as you grew older, you decided to uh, reinvent yourself as an official, as a coach, as a friend of the sport. And it's being exhibited now with your promotion, your involvement with the Wrestlers and Business Network, with with the Takedown Sportswear Company, with the coming event at McCamish Pavilion, the 50th edition of the All-Star Classic. You've given so much of your life to this sport. What do you get in return? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I ju it's just my, my dad preached us every day of our life, give back to wrestling. And, uh, of course, there's a whole nother story behind that. Uh, I had an uncle was uh, broke his neck wrestling, was quadriplegic. And uh, we just uh, were passionate about wrestling and growing the sport. Now, your brothers are involved too, right? Yes, sir. Yep, yep. Jerry, uh, I've got a, a Jerry and Rick, uh, four and five years younger. They both uh, wrestled. Uh, Jerry was a state champion also. Rick uh, was a runner-up multi-place uh, winner. They both wrestled for me at the uh, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga after high school. You know, I think we should give credit where credit's due. You mentioned him briefly, but I'll mention Walt Hannibal. Uh, who's a great wrestler and a coach in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania at the YMCA. And it was that guy you wanted to tag along with at an early age. Your dad was an important and instrumental part of uh, the motivation of your and, and desire to be a part of this sport. But he was so much more than that to so many more kids. Can you talk about your dad, Walt? Uh, yeah, he, uh, he became motivated, uh, after my uncle, uh, suffered the injury, uh, and the setback. And, uh, he started that, uh, youth, actually it was youth, a lot of junior high kids too, at the Wilkes-Barre YMCA. And it was a who's who of people that came through that program. Uh, and of course he went on to start the back Mount wrestling club out in Dallas, Georgia, or <laughs> Dallas, Georgia, Dallas, Dallas, Pennsylvania. But he, uh, yeah, he just, uh, always volunteered and never wanted to make any money, uh, on the sport. Just couldn't do enough to grow it and offer that opportunity for young men to, to grow and become better people. I got to believe that, um, the early death of your uncle Fred had, uh, and, and let's describe the situation. They were wrestling on horsehair mats. The, the, uh, the hold that was put on your uncle at the time is now an illegal hold. It was a full Nelson. 
Uh, he had his head slammed into the mat, which essentially snapped his neck. Uh, he would have probably, most likely, lost his life at that point had a doctor not been an, available in the crowd. But he went on to the age of 33, 17 years after his accident, and that's when we lost him. i got to believe that has provided some sense of uh, uh, something greater than than you, me, et cetera, where we want to salute the memory and the involvement of Fred. Oh, absolutely. Great, great guy. Yeah, never heard him complain or ever ask why me. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's just the motivation. Uh, you know, it's not, it was a freak accident. Uh, Fred lived a good life, uh, went to as much wrestling as he could in his wheelchair. Uh, wow. Just it was really great. It was good for the kids. The Wilkesboro YMCA kids got to see them uh, at tournaments and things where we'd uh, load them up in a, a van that uh, the, the community up there uh, bought for them. Uh, just really special guy. But, uh, but of course, you know, those horsehair mats, of course, I remember sleeping on those things in a van riding the tournaments around the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, but uh, I was really thankful when those better mats out of Sunbury came out. And I, my dad was a real good friends with uh, Mr. Tischler and, and a lot of it because of Fred. You were a, um, a football player as well. As a matter of fact, wasn't it Gainesville's head football coach, Bruce Miller, uh, started the program at Parkview. And when he heard that uh, there was a former AAU national champion, he uh, he had to see you for your for, you know right away. T- that, can you talk to us about Coach Miller? <laughs> that was really a funny situation. I, I I didn't have any idea what I was getting into. We moved here, and uh, uh, in the car on the way down, my dad told me uh, Parkview High School didn't have a wrestling team because the lady in the office told him they didn't have wrestling, and uh, he he wanted to wait till we got in the road on the way home. Uh, there were uh, two gentlemen in uh, back in Pennsylvania and Gary and Hayden Evans at Wyoming Valley West High School that uh, <laughs> they were trying to convince my dad to let you know, let me stay there with them and not bring me down here. But, uh, of course, you know, the family needed to stay together. But we got down here and it was uh, we we're in the office, of course, back home. School didn't start until after Labor Day. Well, down in Georgia, it starts earlier and. We, we noticed there weren't a lot of people around. My mom heard a school bus, so she thought, well, maybe we ought to go over to the school and see what, uh, what what's up and get registered. Well, three days into the school year, we realized we were tardy or delinquent. <laughs> and uh, But one of the football coaches, you know, of course, drug me out on the field that day, and there was actually a game that Friday night. But uh, And I played in that game, and football down here is just unlike anything other. Uh, but three weeks into the season, one of the linemen asked, uh, said something to Coach Miller. He said, hey, uh, why don't we try to get Bud out for wrestling? And I just I asked him, I said, well, you have a wrestling team? And it, it, was, it, was, it was actually fun at the time because I never told him I wrestled. I said, oh, yeah, I'd like that. And, of course, nothing was ever said till the season ended, wrestling season started, and I had a great time that year. You were responsible for bringing the high school uh, state championships back to the state of Georgia. Uh, I, I guess one of the reasons I wanted to do this interview today, obviously to, to put some light on the 50th edition of the All-Star Classic. It'll take place November 1st as we kick off the collegiate wrestling season, but also to pay tribute to you, your family. Heck, your mother drove the bus. Uh, Marianne <laughs> drove the bus. Your father uh, started the booster program. Uh, you know, you and your, your two brothers led the way athletically on the mat and helping to charge the Panthers on to um, incredible success over the years. And, and I remember it, it was your principal that said, you're my first uh, state champion. And yeah. put your picture up in the lunchroom at the high school where it still hangs to this day. Well, the, the good thing is they finally moved that picture into the wrestling room so the kids, <laughs> so the kids could eat lunch in peace. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, we were the, you know, I was the first state champion at Parkview High School in all the different sports. And, and, you know, with some of the athletes that have come through there, the Jeff Frank cores of the world, and it's just an unbelievable school for the athletes that produce it. Great, great area, great school. Uh, but yeah, my mom drove the bus. Uh, she still can't, she still helps us with the state high school tournament in the hospitality room for the officials and workers. And uh, yeah, the whole family just 
just can't get enough of wrestling. And, uh, you know, we're blessed to have that opportunity, you know, and, and we have this group down here, the Atlanta Takedown Association, or, you know, Gary Schaefer and Gary Gyra and that whole group, uh, you know, we put on these events, uh, you know, and we brought the state high school championship, uh, all six classifications uh, under one roof. And it, it is a great event. It may be the best, best weekend of some of these kids' lives. Uh, we, we do everything we can to make it the best experience uh, they can have. And, of course, that's the way I want the All-Star Classic to be also. You know, as much as we talked about your loss to Murray Cruz where you suffered the concussion, I will tell you, and I will tell everybody else, after that, in freestyle, you chased Murray Cruz everywhere you could, beating him five <laughs> times alone that summer. <laughs> so, <laughs> paybacks. <laughs> no, no comment. I don't even want to. <laughs> yeah, I just, just no. Uh, well, yeah, Murray, like I said, Murray Cruz was a great wrestler. Yeah. I, nothing to say anything bad about him. He, 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 and went on to be great in the, at the college level too. Oh, absolutely. Iowa State uh, benefited. The Cyclones benefit in a big way. We've been talking about Hannibal uh, of uh, Takedown Sportswear and also the the Wrestlers and Business Network in Atlanta. Uh, he is one of the point men in charge of the 50th edition of the All-Star Classic. John Licata, of course, the founder. And we can't thank Rob Larmar and the group down there in Atlanta for uh, all that they've done to make this event happen. ESPNU, who will be broadcasting the event, will start about 3.15 on the 1st. It'll be Sunday. Uh, that's when the wrestling action starts. We want to invite you to be a part of the day, though. It starts at about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning with clinics. Uh, you'll see so many stars of the sport, and uh, surely you'll be able to talk to them. This is a family get-together, if you will. And our guest today has been a big part of our family for so many years, Bud Hannibal. Bud, thanks for the time today. Absolutely, Scott. And one thing, there's a good chance we may up the start time to 3 o'clock. Now that ESPN's involved, we have to be ready for that to go live at 5 o'clock. But, uh, hey, and thank, thank you very much for uh, allowing me the opportunity to be a part of Part of what you do and your show and uh and it's great for great for our wrestling community i'm pleased that we're friends my friend it has been a good one and i look forward to many more years fans you can be a part of it the all-star classic atlanta georgia the 2015 edition it's also the 50th anniversary thanks to our friends at the wrestlers and business uh network also the national wrestling coaches association for helping to make this happen a special shout out to terry allison Dustin and uh, Randy Kawa at the, uh, at the Takedown Sportswear Company for helping to make this happen as well. Bud, thanks for the time. I'll be looking forward to uh, working with you that, that special weekend at the end of October as we approach the collegiate wrestling season. Yes, sir, Scott. Looking forward to seeing you down here in Atlanta. Comfortably ensconced in the Nike hot seat today, our guest, Bud Hannibal. Thanks for watching.